I want to congratulate the Nigeria Economic Summit Group for bringing all the heads and the practitioners in the creative industry this morning. I've been told that this is not going to be a talk shop, but rather this is going to be finding solution to the myriad of you know, challenges that we face today in the creative industry. The creative industry, I think it's one industry which touches all of us. And um, no, no matter what you do every day, it's an industry that touches your life. Okay, so without much ado, um, I think the conversations can start. So initially the plan was that we would have um, a topic on each table, uh, but because of the numbers, what we have done is that we have collapsed. So we are having just two tables, and the two tables are going to be looking at four different themes. So on the table on the right, the conversation should be focusing on intellectual property, credit solutions, digital platforms, licenses, and permits. And my, the table on the left will be looking at self-regulation, talent development, fashion industry value chain, and high value content in films. On this table, table one, we dealt with intellectual property and credit solutions. Unfortunately, the time was not enough. Uh, <laughs> it was stimulating, so uh, we started from credit solutions, and they wanted to know why, in spite of the so-called CBN fund, no applications have been, or the flood of, I mean, the flood of appli loan applications that was suspected is not, uh, it's, it's not coming through. Anyway, and I think uh, we drilled down to a few things. One, um, uh, most of the people in the creative industry did not have collateral, because obviously those loan applications come with tangible collateral, requirement for tangible collaterals. While we're dealing with creatives who actually most of the time have intangible uh, collaterals to offer, that's one. Secondly, we found out that also, uh, because the industry is still not matured, uh, most of the creatives do not have solid professional services to take them to the next level or for them to stretch uh, whatever they have to offer. Uh, thirdly, we also uh, agreed that um, even if you had the intellectual, okay, there's also the issue of enlightenment. Many people do not know, are not enlightened enough to know the importance of intellectual property. People do not know that there's a law that's strong enough to help them do that. Uh, also, people are not vigilant when it comes to, and that will ties up to, to enlightenment. We talked a lot about infrastructure and the fact that we need investment in infrastructure and we need government policy that encourages that investment in infrastructure. We talked about um, standards of education. We talked about the importance of having a um, national framework or a national curriculum to make sure that um, Agungi and Sons cannot just set up a one-week uh, training program <laughs> in a shack somewhere and call it... <laughs> I thought that. And call it um, whatever they want, certificate in whatever. And that there needs to be standards. So that if you say you're a pattern maker, for example, everybody knows exactly how many weeks of training, how many hours of instruction, and what capacity um, has ensued as a result. So we talked a lot about that. We talked about the importance of branding and marketing, and the fact that the creative industry needs to engage more outside its own. So film sector needs to talk to advertising, it needs to talk to television, and that we need platforms that encourage such cross um, dialogue. We talked about more sophisticated um, revenue models and the fact that actors, for example, are relying on only their revenue from acting to make money or um, tailors are relying on only their money from sewing and the fact that we need more sophisticated um, business models that allow us to capitalize on multiple revenue streams um, for the creativity. And I think everything that we, we discussed, I think was summed up um, very nicely in what you said, Mrs. Ogunlesi. You said to compete globally, we have to operate at global standards. And so we always talk about wanting to compete globally, but it takes work and it takes people making a sacrifice and investing of their time and investing of themselves and it takes all of what we said. And I think that's the message I will leave us with, that to compete globally, we have to operate to global standards. Amazing. Thank you so much for that. Thank you very much.